Hi, good day everyone. We are from Group D and we are going to present to you about celiac disease. Did you know 1% of the world population cannot eat gluten or else they will suffer from pain, diarrhea and lose the nutrition in their body? This is because all these people have a condition called celiac disease. Celiac disease, also known as celiac sprue, is a chronic digestive and autoimmune disorder in which the body overreacting and it can damage the small intestine of a person. It is a complex immune-mediated disorder in which the body's immune system causes damage to the lining of the intestine, leading to inflammation when the affected people take in gluten. In people with celiac disease, when they consume food containing gluten, it triggers the immune system to attack and damage the small intestine. They will feel pain and their small intestine cannot absorb or get the important nutrients such as vitamins, calcium, protein, carbohydrates and fats that their body needs. The body cannot work well without these nutrients and this can cause long-lasting digestive problems and it may affect several organs in the body. And if it was left untreated, it can lead to neurological damage, infertility, and even cancer. Now, we will continue with the symptoms of celiac disease. So, what exactly happens when these people take foods containing gluten? The symptoms can manifest in many ways in a person, and they will start to appear after gluten is ingested. There are three types of symptoms that we're going to cover, which are symptoms for adults, for children, and for chronic complications. For the first one, diarrhea may occur, including bloating, flatulence, and constipation. Around 43% of people with celiac disease will develop diarrhea, which can be solved by practicing a gluten-free diet. Celiac disease also causes fatigueness and impairs the absorption of the intestine that can lead to a sudden weight loss and may also lead to anemia due to iron deficiency. For children, the symptoms can vary a bit. For example, the children may develop swollen belly, constipation, diarrhea, and start to vomit. However, the impairment of the absorption of the intestine is the concerning one as they can impair the growth of the child and cause the child to have a poor weight gain. Other than that, the child may become easily irritable, have delayed puberty and have tooth enamel damage. Finally, celiac disease can have chronic complications which are long-term problems that will develop gradually. First one is bone weakening due to deficiency of vitamin D. Next, miscarriage and infertility which are also caused by vitamin D deficiency and calcium deficiency. And lastly, celiac disease can lead to small bowel cancer and peripheral neuropathy or even seizures. Now that we understand the effects of celiac disease, let's see who can get this disease. What are some of the risk factors for getting celiac disease? Why do these T cells go haywire, entering and infiltrate the intestine of certain people in the first place? Well, first, a lot of it has to do with family history, or we can say it is hereditary. It has been found that first degree relatives, means parents, children, and siblings, are said to have 4 to 15% chances to develop celiac disease. Other autoimmune diseases also can increase the risk of having celiac disease. Most of the time, when they have autoimmune diseases such as type 1 diabetes, autoimmune thyroid disease, and Addison's disease, due to the immunologic, genetic, and environmental factors, they are at risk of having celiac disease. For autoimmune thyroid disease, four factors are responsible for linking these two conditions, and they are genetic, presence of antibodies, common symptoms, and risk of other autoimmune disorder. Prevalence of celiac disease in patients with type 1 diabetes is found to be about 8%, and according to several studies, people who develop Addison disease has an 8-fold increased chance of subsequent celiac disease. Addison's disease is a disease when your immune system attacks your adrenal glands and severely damages your adrenal cortex, and your adrenal glands cannot produce enough of the steroid hormones. Other genetic conditions like Turner syndrome or Down syndrome also have an increased risk in having celiac disease. One study shows that among 1,202 patients with Down syndrome that were screened, 4.6% of them have celiac disease. The risk of celiac disease in females with Turner syndrome range from twofold for the first five years of their life to fivefold in females aged more than 10 years old. After we have looked at the risk factors and symptoms, let us understand the pathophysiology of it. 
Pathophysiology is the function of changes that accompany a particular disease. So, how can celiac disease cause a person to have absorption problems? Well, this is because the mechanism for it already takes place in the small intestine in the first place. The primary mechanism is related to the inappropriate adaptive immune response to gluten-derived peptides. When a person with celiac disease eats food that contains gluten, it will enter the small intestine and will be broken down into peptides called gliadin. The gliadin will then enter the connective tissue of the mucosa that lines the small intestine to be modified into transglut aminase by an enzyme. Transglut aminase will trigger the activation of adaptive immune response that involves both the cell mediated immunity and humoral immunity. This will cause an inflammation around the small intestine that is the cause of certain symptoms such as diarrhea, bloating, and constipation. This inflammation can also damage the intestinal lining of the small intestine that will damage the villi and thus reduce the surface area for absorption. That is why nutrients, fats, ions, and vitamins cannot be absorbed properly. Let's take a look on the diagnosis of celiac disease. There are two blood tests which can help to diagnose celiac disease. The first test is serology testing, as known as TTG IgA test which looks for antibodies in your blood. Elevated levels of certain antibody proteins indicate an immune reaction to gluten. Genetic testing for human leukocyte antigen HLA-DQ2 and HLA-DQ8 can be used to rule out celiac disease. Please remember that all celiac disease blood tests require patients to be on a gluten-containing diet to be accurate. If the results of this test indicate celiac disease, doctor may do the following test to confirm the result. Endoscopy. This test uses a long tube with a tiny camera that put into your mouth and pass down your throat. The camera enables your doctor to view your small intestine and take a small tissue sample to analyze for damage to the villi. Capsule Endoscopy This test uses a tiny wireless camera to take pictures of your entire small intestine. The camera sits inside a vitamin-sized capsule, which you swallow. As the capsule travels through your digestive tract, the camera takes thousands of pictures that are transmitted to a recorder. Now, let's move on to management of celiac disease. Patients have to take gluten-free diet. Only food and beverage with a gluten content less than 20 parts per million is allowed. Do you know what is gluten? Gluten is actually a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. For example of gluten containing food are wheat and derivatives of wheat, such as wheat starch. Cereals malt, brewer's yeast, critical, barley, and rye are also gluten-containing food. Patients can take in this gluten-free food such as oat, quinoa, brown rice, amaranth, millet, and corn. Don't worry if you don't know where to get this gluten-free food. Major stores in KL with gluten-free products are Cold Storage, Jaya Grocer, Sam's Grocery and Marks and Spencer. Here are some important tips for those with celiac disease or those who are taking care of celiac disease patients. First, always read labels of the product and buy FDA approved product. FDA only allows packaged food with less than 20 parts per million of gluten to be labeled as gluten free. Second, when having meal outside, Always let the person serving you know your dietary requirements and how severe your food allergy or intolerance. Last but not least, always have vitamins and dietary supplements. Due to inflammation of the stomach lining, it may cause malnutrition. Thus, it's always beneficial to take in some supplements. Now that we have gone through celiac disease from how it happens to how to manage them, we hope that you guys now know more about this disease. Thank you for staying with us until the end of this video. Before you leave, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, leave a thumbs up on this video and don't forget to share. Bye!